everyone, Pot I Sam, welcome to, well, it's an inbox review, look through the box, look at everything I've got, for what I'm contemplating being one of my next builds, if not the next build. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to look at today, well, it's a kit I've had for a while now, and it's dig this old beast of a kit, the 12 scale Fujimi R32 GTR. Um, it's a huge 12 scale kit. I've got a ton of aftermarket to add to it as well, which is beautiful. And I think it's going to make quite an interesting build. So, yes, let's have a look for everything. And we'll come back at the end and have a little bit of a chat. Right then, so we've got the camera right the way up at the ceiling. As high up as it will go to get this absolutely monstrous boxing shot. Once we get out of shot, we'll come down a bit closer because, well, we don't need to be zoomed out that far so a huge box the box is like two foot long 18 inches wide and about four inches deep it's a big old box not the biggest one i've seen um but it's certainly up there with some of the biggest wonderful box art the r32 on the front a couple of wheels off the ground very very cool looking box art so let's whip open the top of a quick general overview of what's in there and then we'll move on to looking through the parts we've got the monstrous body Several sprue bags or instructions, a bag full of all sorts and bits of bobs, which to be honest, I don't know what half of it is. I'm guessing some of it's window masks, we've got decals, uh, mirrored parts. We've got a whole bag of tricks. So there are screws, screwdrivers, mesh, some very, very nice metallic uh, GTR and Nissan badges in there as well. A whole myriad of sprues, clears, everything. So I'm going to pop this to one side. So I'm going to bring some bits out and put them there. So we've got the standard kit to go through. I've got a load of aftermarket and a load of extras that I'm going to add to my build. So um, bear with me because it's going to take a while to get through. Because it's a lot of stuff. Right, we'll start with the body. The most impressive part of this kit is this body shell. It is huge. So there you go. Absolutely massive. It is approximately 370 millimeters. So it's a good length. What's that? About 12, about 13 inch, roughly. So no, it's not. It's about 15 inch. It's a big old beast. Very cleanly molded. Really, really nice. It's molded in the gunmetal grey. That's kind of well iconic on this car. But we're not going to go that colour. We'll get to that a little bit later. But molded really well a few seam lines to deal with um nothing too drastic it's cleaner than a lot of 24 scale cars to be honest but it is going to require some nice careful cleanup here and there but overall very nicely molded including the iconic tail end of this with its afterburner style lights and embossed skyline logo obviously we've got opening doors and opening bonnet or trunk uh, the boot lid's not, which is a bit of a shame, but it would leave this very, very thin window surround there. So I can kind of see why they've done it like that. Um, would I cut that open? Hell no, because that would be as weak as hell. And I think it would cause an absolute nightmare. But overall, that's a pretty body and it's big. It's a big old kit. Uh, a lot bigger than the 16 scale uh, 959 we built recently, obviously because this is 12th. And I built the 12 scale Caterham, and this dwarfs the Caterham uh, because, by the nature of what they are, the Caterhams are quite small cars. I'm going to pop this back in this bag because it's a very important piece. And I'm going to pop it safely out of the way over here because, like I say, we have tons and tons of parts to get through. Lots of rustly bags. Come with staples, my absolutely favourite. I love staples. You cannot beat the good old staples. Right, on this one, we've got brake discs, which are not really going to be used because we've got very, very nice aftermarket parts to use. I'm going to zoom this in. There we go. We've got our exhaust system here. Let me spin this around so we've got green back, making it a bit better for us to see. Exhaust system here, it's very, very impressive. We've got the catalytic converter, silencer box, so on and so forth. I have a piece to add to this, which is basically... This back box, it was 3D printed by my buddy Dan. So that is somehow going to be finagled into place on this. But we'll figure that out when we come to it later on. 
differential, drive train, prop shaft, drive shaft, whatever you want to call it. The engine and gearbox all incorporated in one. Various other components on here. Um, pretty well crispy moldy. For this scale, I would expect it to be a little bit more crisp and well defined, but it is what it is. It's a 12 scale car of quite a obscure subject, really, because there's not many other large scale Japanese cars um, out there that I know of anyway. They're mostly uh, Ferraris, um, Porsches, Lamborghinis, from the likes of Fujimi and Tamiya. Uh, you've got the Caterham. Um, so there's not a huge amount of cars like this so it is what it is but yeah they're not badly molded they could be better um just a little bit vague in places we'll pick you up to the engine detail it is there once you get it painted and a wash in there it's going to look pretty decent so yeah no problem there nicely molded i'm just picking the bags up randomly there's no set order to these at all so uh, with me so this one we've got some interior components, we've got the door cards, which are pretty well detailed to be fair. Dashboard, right hand drive obviously because it's a Japanese car so that's nice to see. Uh, we've got the engine rocker cover, the cam cover, uh, intercooler, I'm guessing that's intercooler, it must be. Uh, do the door cards, some ancillary components to the engine, the um, steering column and a few other bits. Again, it, it's moulded, it's crisp, it's clean. Um, it's just going to do a little bit more surface detail, but to be honest, the real car probably doesn't have that much detail. Oh, the window wipers look pretty decent as well. Uh, steering rack, and again, yeah, all molded quite cleanly. Going to need minimal cleanup. There's a bit of flash here and there on some of the parts, but I think overall, it's going to be a pretty quick, clean build. Even though it's a large scale kit, I think it is going to be quite a quick build because it's not really massively par heavy now we've got our seats we've got two to be honest pretty nice uh, racing style seats that come standard in the R32 we've got the cockpit tub as well with the rear seats molded in place details quite good can't see any problems at all we've got the skyline logos embossed into the door sills uh, this must be the front uh, splitter assembly at the front seats we are going to use because we've got some very nice seats to add to this which we'll get through to in a bit but if you were using them ejector pin marks on the back to take care of um, other than that they are typical Japanese sports car seats really that's it but yeah you make a nice job of seeing these built out of the box they come up pretty well so I don't see any issues there um, I think they'll turn out pretty well Next up, we've got a smaller bag in here with a steering wheel. We've got what looks like the exhaust back box. It is. So, steering wheel is pretty nice. As you can see, handbrake. Very nice textured detail on there. Center console for the radio. I'm going to guess they're like boost gauges and that. Battery. The battery is pretty nice, actually. Some nice detail on there. Pretty cool. There's the center console radio and boost gauge i'm gonna guess goes in there some gauges gear sticks nicely done nicely textured as well near enough everything's got a seam on it so it is going to require cleanup but that's pretty much standard for any kit really um the way things are molded on these car kits they have a seam inevitably everywhere but again no problems there at all i'd love to sit here and waffle on about the parts all day long but we've got a lot to get through uh, so I try to keep it as short as possible. But obviously, I'm thinking of building this next. Um, so, I want to document it before I suddenly, sporadically think, I want to build that and start it. So, the floor pan is a big, chunky piece of metal. That's going to be 2 mil thick. E metal? It's plastic, you idiot. Plastic, and it is 2.5 mil thick. So, nice and secure. I've got a few kits in larger scale. But the shatty floor pan's quite thin, so this is uh, it's not going to snap on you, it's not going to cause you any issues. There's some detail underneath, you know, as much as there can be detail underneath. Um, so yeah, nothing to talk, really talk about here at all. We've got our engine compartment here, got some ejector pin marks to take care of. Um, the rest of them will pretty much be hidden, I think. Underneath, it's all clean, yeah, 
nothing there really to go on about. It's pretty basic plastic. Quite impressive though. it's nice and thick though. I do like that. Next up we have, what are we doing here? We've got the rest of the brake components, subframes, drive shafts, prop shafts. Uh, we've got the radiator, steering joint, suspension components. They're nicely crisply done actually. Let's have a quick look myself before I bring it down for us. So, nice big sprue. So, I'm going to guess this is fuel tank. We've got the radiator, we've got the front and rear suspension struts, steering, um, what are we going to call them on this? Knuckles? I don't know. Uh, we've got parts of the brakes again, uh, subframe assemblies, uh, like anti roll bars, prop shaft. Um, now, that wasn't the steering before. God knows what that was then. It must be going mad. And drive shafts and what have you. So, again, pretty basic. Pretty well moulded, the suspension's really nice, the springs are nicely clearly defined, a little bit of clean up on those, and they'll be all good, but it's a big sprue, that's probably one of the biggest ones in the box, so that is like nearly, where is it, 400 centimetres long by 30, so it's a big old sprue, a big old chunk of plastic, it's certainly a big box of plastic, brake calipers are there as well, which I think we're replacing too. The real goodies are in a bit. The aftermarket bits for this are absolutely beautiful. But the kit parts actually look pretty decent as well. So yeah, nicely moulded there. No problems at all. We're running our screws now. So we've got our rear spoiler. Our doors. Our bonnet. Or hood. Wing mirrors. And again, pretty nicely moulded. Got a typical plastic marble in effect you get from injection molding once you're primed up and prepped you won't see that this is going to require some very very careful cutting out i think i'd always be tempted to use a razor saw on that or a knife rather than trying to cut through it um again check the pin marks on the inside if there's no insulation included with the kit i think i might be tempted to add some carpet type insulation in there uh door mirrors looking good Boot spoiler looks good as well. So yeah, nice clean molded plastic. Yeah, very very nice. That's a big old um, bonnet. That's a big one. That thing certainly is. Um, it's going to be an impressive model once built. But it's nice to open. You know, you can open it. You can open the doors as well. It can be a little bit gimmicky sometimes because they quite often don't work, but from what I've seen of this, it seems to fit quite well, which we'll know when we come to build Nick, because we'll start to dry for things. So yeah, it looks really, really nice. Very, very cool. Right, clear parts, we've got the standard kit wheels, a few other bags, and we're through all the kit parts, and we can then move on to all the interesting extra goodies I've gone and bought with the kit. So, parts that can make or break a kit are 100% the clear parts. The actual cabin glass is moulded all in one. Fujimi's is quite often not the best. But to be fair, whilst it's not as clear as some parts, you can see a lot of distortion on the actual glass there. The clarity is actually really, really good. Uh, if I bring that up, you look at the marks on my bench, they don't really magnify a huge amount. And you can still see it all clearly. So, pretty good to be fair. No side glass, obviously. Um, it's a good point, that. Is there no side glass? Oh. Huh. Well, I never knew that. There mustn't be any side glass. Fair play. So, the windows are down on the car, so it rains, you're getting soaked. Uh, light units are on there as well as the rear um, number plate light as well. And yeah, overall that glass, yeah, it's pretty decent to be fair. It's a big old piece. You need to be very, very careful of this that you don't break it. I mean, if you broke it here, it's not the end of the world because that's hidden, but anywhere else, good luck getting spurs for this. You can end up having to buy a whole new kit. And for that reason, I'm putting it straight back in its bag, out the way, and go with that body shell out the way safe for a bit. Right, we've got a whole bag of bits to get through. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. 
wheels. Now the kit wheels are pretty nice. I can't remember what type of wheels these are. I'm not an expert on Japanese cars at all. But they're very nice. They're in the bronzy metallic colour, which is a colour I may well be tempted to paint them in. Like I did for my 24 scale Tamiya. The wheels look good. Pretty much detail on there. There's a bit on there. They've got the right towel, tire, towel, what the hell? They've got the tire valve stems um, kind of depicted in there. Um, they look pretty good. We've got the kit tires as well, which are marked as Bridgestones. Bridgestone Potenzas. Does it show a size? It actually does. They are 225 50 16s. Yeah, crazy that a performance car like this is running 16 inch rims. And yet, my family, Mondeo, has got 18s on. It shows you how things have progressed over the years. So, yeah, very, very nice. Tire tread on the tyres is really good. These are very, very nice, high quality. But, and it's a big but, we're not using these. <laughs> so, they will be probably sold on because we don't require them. Right. So that is all the actual box empty. Uh, we've got a few bag of bits to go through. And the instructions quickly. And a bag of decals, decals, stickers, what have you. So we'll have a quick look through this lot. Now, I'm not going to pretend I know what everything is. But we'll deal with it as we go. So screws. We've got one bag. Two bag of screws. Three bag of screws. Some bits more screws and some mesh so we'll deal with these one at a time i'm going to put these all over there and we'll go through them as we go so we've got some nice mesh in here it's really high quality mesh to be fair that'll be for the grills and the intakes and then we've got a bag of screws in there they're all labeled separately so these are two by eight mils so there's one bag of screws we've got another bag of screws in here these are two by ten mils and we've got the bonnet stay very very nice so you can keep your bonnet up um, we've got your door lock spring and the door spring as well and of course those screws we just mentioned in there in here we've got a whole myriad of different screws i'll let you look at that good nuts washers push nuts screws all kinds of stuff in there so as with the porsche build these will all be broken down and put to my storage boxes for ease we've got some more screws there we've got some 2 by 5 mils and you even get a nice little screwdriver, which I'm going to guess will last about eight screws and then the head will fall off. Um, and use your own then. Much better quality screwdriver. Another bag of bits in here we have. That is the steering column, because I remember looking at instructions. We've got the door hinges made of what look like die cast metal, which actually look very, very good quality. A couple of UV joint pieces. Um, so yeah, some pretty nice parts in there. The door hinges are very, very substantial. If you, can, I'm not going to get them out of the bag. These here, very, very substantial. They're going to screw in place and hopefully give a very, very positive feel to the door locks. So again, in here we've got what looks like a washer bottle, an expansion tank, and the radiator cooling fan. All in there, molded in white plastic. I'm not going to get it out. But it's not worth it. We've got our front turn signals in yellow and we'll probably keep them yellow um keep it original as we can so they're really nice very very nice we've got the rear light lenses for the afterburner style lights which look very very good as well nice quality we've got some chrome parts we've got the tailpipe of the car so there's the original tailpipe which is there and this is my aftermarket and i think this is much more suiting to a skyline so they were going to try our best to get this to fit it's going to take some doing it's been very well 3d printed by my buddy dan scattergood um he, he did make me two we'll show those a bit the other one's a bit too big wherever it's gone <laughs> it's in the drawer somewhere so yeah uh mirror inserts got chrome are they center caps for the wheels i think they are so yeah, some nice parts in there. Here we've got some seatbelt material, I'm guessing. It looks like seatbelt material. I might be completely wrong when we look through the instructions. And then these absolutely beautiful metallic badges. We're going to zoom in on these because these are worth a look. 
they are absolutely stunning very very nice as you can see so you've got the GTR logo the GT logo Nissan and the Scarlet emblem at the front there as well and all these parts here come standard with the kit so everything you get here is what comes with the actual kit so they are very very nice a nice little touch added to the kit and I'm gonna lob all this back in the box so bear with me so like I say the kit they're about 150 odd pounds I paid 137 for this because I got it a little bit cheaper somewhere is it worth the money <laughs> to be honest yeah as a base kit it is stunning it's a very impressive model it's a big model as well and I think it would make a very interesting build and hopefully it will as a video build for us so they're all the standard parts we've still got a bag to go through which is all the decals decals yada 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 look like masks and that as well so what have we got in here ah okay right so what, the, what on earth are these things what are they okay right these actually do look like bloody stickers <laughs> are they stickers they are so I'm taking a mickey calling these stickers and they actually are stickers. So I've got no idea what's going on with all this blue malarkey. But yeah, so these are stickers for the instruments, engine markings, so on and so forth. So yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I really don't. I think I'd rather have decals. Now I've just invested in a decent printer. So there may be a fact that I'm going to scan these and print them off as decals and see how they go. But yeah, that's really weird. Getting stickers. Ticking the mickey. I'll go and get stickers. There you go. We've got some mirrored stickers again. So these are going to be for wing mirrors. Certain other parts. Are, I'm going to guess light lenses, which is quite cool they are. Nice and highly reflective, as you can see. And then masks for the side windows on acetate, which again, what the hell is going on there? <laughs> I'm really confused. We're going to have to go through the instructions, which funny enough, we're going to do right now because that is confusing the bejesus out of me as to what the hell is going on. Stickers, weird masks. Yeah, I'd have rather had decals and stickers all day long because hmm, I'm just keen on the stickers. So I think we may be looking at printing our own there with those. But anyway, the instructions. Oh yeah, we've got the mask set for the windows as well, which we'll look at in a minute. I forgot that was in there. Now the instructions are on a big near A3 instruction book. It's a big old book. Uh, we've got a nice picture of the bill car. As you can see and then our assembly starts with the engine you've got your cut off your screws um obviously are they life size i, I think they're too big aren't they where's my ruler let's have a look 14 mil oh they might be you know yeah they are life size so that's quite handy you got life size screw markings there to weigh things up how they look stickers there we go components all going there we've got some keys here as well which some of it's english some it's not yeah i don't know what's going on there removed nice one see typical legends there as well and we're moving on from the engine building all the way up to suspension components radiator intercooler onto the interior there's that steering column built with those parts i showed you in the um, and, uh, the bag before again all the parts are laid out needed the nuts and what have you paint call outs instructions to be fair quite clear obviously we've got some aftermarket parts to add to this so um, we're going to have to be careful as we go through that we don't miss our parts that we've added pretty pretty simple straightforward um, building to be honest things like this um, the push nuts fit over 
there's our mesh in place cutting it to size refer to number page 16 which I'm sure there must be a template in there again there's the light reflectors out those chrome parts so on and so forth the lights sorry the lights the clear parts are held in by these push fit pins so that's really good so it's like a one-way washer um, it grips the plastic you get this little tool to help push them down there's that sticker that was at the bottom that is for putting at the bottom of the um ah okay so they're not masks they are actual stickers to simulate the actual window surrounds we're not going to do that we're going to spray ours so that's okay okay i see what that is now that makes sense assembling our doors with the hinges door cards opening and closing hmm, there's a little latch to hold the door shut it's a really good little touch i like that so hopefully that'll be a nice positive feel so yeah assembly looks pretty straightforward to be fair although it's a big kit and it's quite daunting I don't think it's going to be any real issue. And a lot of the parts were, I'd be worried about gluing things or what have you. They are held on by these push fits. So it's quite good. And I think a lot of the high stress area parts are actually metal. By the look of it, we can find them. Again, those bonnet hinges are in there and they are metal. So that's quite a nice touch. So you're going to get a bit of stress, but the, the sprung washers will take any uh, flex and the metal actual uh bonnet hinges will you know not snap like plastic would so pretty straightforward can't see any issues at all call out for um the stickers that are on there don't mind the metal stickers being stickers at all but i'm not impressed with the actual other stickers i think we're gonna have to change that call out of all the uh, sprues which as you can see there's not a huge amount there's one page there and there's another for a 12 scale kit. If you built a Tami 12 scale, you know how immensely par heavy they can be. There's the uh, template for the mesh. And there's all the parts laid out. So there we go. That is the kit all by itself. Had a look through. There's a lot in there. It's well and truly worth 150 quid all day long. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful looking kit. But we're going to make it, hopefully even more beautiful i'm going to straighten my camera up i must have knocked it so hopefully we're going to improve how it looks how are we going to do that well i bought this kit and then somebody put me onto the studio rosso detail of parts now they were made a long time ago and they've been out of stock for a long long time and they are very very expensive um i think for the whole lot that they did for this car which i have it was about just under 300 pounds altogether. So it was twice the cost of the kit if you have to market parts. Um, it was at least a couple hundred pounds for them. But the parts are phenomenal. So we'll go through them one at a time. I can zoom in a bit now because we've got some slightly smaller parts. So these are the TE37SL wheels. They're 18 inch. So they're bigger than the 16 inch. So they should look a little bit more interesting. We've got rustly packets. So bear with me. I'm just going to grab one wheel and the parts and the decals because they're the same wheel but if I remember right I cleaned this one up a touch because it did have some wisps of um, flash, resin flash I suppose it is. So like I say they're 18 inch rims so they're a bit big as you see, low profile tyres, we grab the kit wheels, they are bigger. Um, not by a huge amount, obviously just two inches in scale, so God knows what that is in 12th. Um, but they're good. So the three part wheels, so you've got the resin center, a turned aluminium rim, and then these beautiful, and I mean, this is some of the cleanest resin I have ever seen. There are no bubbles. I can't see any flaws anywhere. I'll bring you in closer to have a look at this. But just look at this tire. It is, it's almost flawless. This is a resin cast part. It's absolutely amazing. It really is beautiful. So very, very nice. There's no manufacturer markings on the tire, uh, which is a bit of a shame um, because I do like to see that on the wheels. It adds a bit of depth to them. Um, but the wheel itself, beautiful, beautiful rim. Still needs a little bit of a clean up. There's a bit of wisps of flash in there, which you always inevitably get with resin. Very nice. We've got the tire valve um, actual 
base is already molded on there and then the tire valve stems themselves um coming here it's tiny tiny little are they plastic no they're actually metal turn metal part in there as well to add on so like i say a three-piece rim Ooh, i nearly said everyone likes a good rim but yeah we'll leave that there right is that the correct way can't remember now but anyway they're very very pretty wheel um not a, not a huge amount of difference in size as such but i think it's going to be more minuscule and there is there is actually when you line it up to be fair uh but it's definitely a better looking wheel and um, being much bigger um well two inches bigger and a lower profile tire i think it's going to look a lot better on the car so like i say there's those that wheel sets like i don't know 70 odd quid i can't remember what they were you also get the wheel stud uh sorry wheel nuts for the center molded in beautiful resin as well and there's some very nice uh, decals decals to put on the wheels color i've not not even thought of yet i do have a reference picture for the car i want to kind of replicate i'll pop it up on screen uh, at the end where we can have a little chat about it but yeah the resin is just um, oh it, it's amazing quality it really really is as i rustle everything next up another absolutely phenomenal <laughs> piece of resin is the seats so the kit seats were decent if i can get these out without wrecking the place these bride seats are even nicer these are oh, they're just beautiful so we get the p um what's the word on before frames mounts for them knee bending in place really high quality p even the p look at that flawless flawless p uh we've got some nice seats on these are different color ones so we're kind of restricted on these to the color of the seats we're going to do by the decals again again not totally sold on what color to do yet because uh, i could always scan these and maybe do them a different color don't know we'll see but these seats just look at the quality of these things they are absolutely phenomenal and like i say this is expensive expensive resin if you give me two seconds let me have a look at my mac and i'll open up a page to tell you the prices but they are absolutely stunning as a piece of cast resin they are absolutely they're flawless they are almost completely flawless. there's a little bit of like a mold ridge here which you can just see but you just need a little bit of sanding but for the most part it is by far the best resin i have ever ever seen it is absolutely amazing so let me find the studio rosso so the seats were 34.99 the brake set was 34 pounds the exterior set was 53 pounds and the wheels are 49.99 so not cheap parts but i think the quality really does show through but beautiful beautiful uh, seats these are going to be very nice and they've got the harness holes as well so really nice like i say not 100 sorted on color yet i have not even thought about it it took me long enough to pick the body color which we'll have a little look at in a bit um but for high quality resin it, uh, it's amazing stuff it really is absolutely beautiful stuff really really nice if i can get that in there it'd be ideal get in there you bugger there we are i'll just seal that back up like I say very expensive off the top of my head the seats were like 50 the wheels were like 60 uh, and i still got two other parts of this to look at so one of them i'm not too taken on that's the exterior parts which i'll just zoom out a touch so what we use are this lot i do not know because this is a 50 pound really heavy detail upset and basically what you get in there is lights so you get light instruments uh, light, light clusters uh for the front um to do early later and the m1s so i do not know the difference in those whatsoever the resin's beautiful as always we've got a lower lift spoiler as well i think it is um so these are our light clusters get them out i have absolutely no idea what the difference is but that's what you get you then get the clear parts which sadly are not the best 
clear resin is very very hard to mold so i think we'll be sticking with the kit plastic for that so whether we use those parts i don't know we've got these spats that are for the rear bumper i believe one of mine is broken it's easily repairable though because i've still got the parts in fact they're both broken you can see they've snapped off their um their mounting points so yeah they're going to need repairing we've got the intakes for the front bumper i think they're the nismo intakes are they i'm not sure and then we've got a couple of smaller lip pieces some photo etch uh badges for the kit which to be honest i think i prefer the ones that come with the kit but i don't know we'll play it by ear we'll see what they're like and then we've got some extra decals as well for we'll look at the wheels and a few other bits of bobs. So this is the one bit I don't know if I'm going to use. So again, if I don't use that, I'll move it on. Get some uh, money back off this little lot. But this all came as part of a trade from Lee. Who very, very kindly messaged me to tell me how to do these parts. We actually did a trade. I traded in my Bills R32, the red one I did. So Lee was happy. Uh, I also traded in the BRZ Subaru. So he was happy. I was happy. And uh, we've got some beautiful detail upset. So this one, I am not 100% sure if we're going to use. We'll see. We'll play that one by ear as we go. But the rest of it, we definitely will, including these absolutely beautiful brake disc and calipers, which we're going to look at now. Like I said, I told you we had a lot to get through. And we do. We've still got more to go through. So in here, we've got some P mounts, which have been cut off. By the previous owner and we've got some dick decals dickles stickers whatever you want to call them and then we've got all the components for this so we've got the vented discs which go with the actual pe side of it so they rotate like that i'll try and build one of a can i just can't remember how they go now off, off hand i can't remember if we need parts off the kit or not i forget I completely forget what we've got. No, we don't. They fit in. So they're going to kind of sit in there like so. So you've got your vented disc. Uh, you've got your hub for the center, which is going to fit into the wheels nicely. And then we've got these beautifully cast resin calipers, which are bigger than the kit ones. So again, they're going to add a lot more interest to the kit. And then the hub itself as well to attach to the kit parts too so really nice and again this is like a 50 odd pound set i can't remember they varied in prices each set vary from like i think it's 30 40 pounds up to 70. so if you if you bear in mind we've got here it's a lot of money in aftermarket it's a lot more than the kit but the resin is beautiful um it, it's just phenomenal quality um, and this has come from taking the time if you rush poor resin you'll get bubbles and flaws so whoever cast this really does know what they're doing i will give them that so yeah we'll definitely use the brakes we'll definitely use the wheels we'll 100 we'll percent use those seats um the exterior parts i'm not 100 sure what we're going to use yet but i guess that's just by the by it's uh, just personal choice is what we're going to use now what other parts have we got right okay well i bought a um seatbelt set in trial scale so that's a harness set in there, I use the same harness set in my Caterham. It's lovely from Model Factory Hero. Uh, we're not going to use the red or yellow ribbon. We've got a different one for that. I then put them in the box and was ordering something. I thought, oh, I need some seatbelts for the Skyline. Oh, the red ones are sold out. I'll buy some blue ones. And the reason the red ones are sold out is because I bloody bought them. So we've got two sets of belts, <laughs> um, which we'll, we'll deal with when we built them. But we're not using the blue. We're not using the red. Um, so we've got two sets of truss scale belts, so whether we keep them or not, I don't know. But what we're going to do is, I bought some of the uh, green ones. I've got some green ribbon, as you can see here. And my buddy Alan very kindly printed me off. Well, he made, scanned and printed off some of the uh, Takata emblems for the decal. So... We've got a pretty okay match on the rib ribbon. There's not a lot of choice for green ribbon out there, so it was a compromise. It's not the exact colour, um, but it's near enough for, for this model. And we've got the harness pad markings. Alan very, very kindly printed for me. Cheers, buddy. 
So that will add a little bit more interest too. So we'll have the green belts in there. We've got the paint mask set, as I said, uh, from Hero Boy. So that will make life a little bit easier to mask up rather than using those stickers that are in with the kit. Um, we've also got the exhaust that Dan very, very calmly made for me. I can find the original one. This is the one Dan originally came up with. And I said, um, yeah, that one might be a bit big. Because I think it is. I think that's going to be a little bit OTT on this. But we don't know until we get there. They do have a big exhaust on them. But I think this is more like it because this is a centimetre big. So in real life, times up by 12. It'd be 12 centimetres, four and a half, five inches, which is about right, I think. Whereas this one is... 12 and a half mil so that's going to be like six seven inch i think it's a little bit big so i think we'll go with this one we're just going to try and adapt it to the original exhaust system there also may be some very very cool nitrous oxide bottles so we've got the bottle itself we've got the valve uh to go on it there and dan's very kindly 3d printed these for me on his resin printer sadly we can't put these in the boot because the boot doesn't open so i'm thinking passenger footwell these or behind the seats i don't know we'll see but it's a bit of fun something different to add he also printed me off because he's crazy a beautiful gtr badge so we're going to paint this up we'll paint the top bright red and then the bottom in molotov chrome so very very cool dan thank you mate and then paint a whole myriad of colors out there we could go for um and it was alan alan parker my buddy who printed those decals for me um Spotted this colour. It's an R35 colour, so it's a bit sacrilegious for those hardcore R32 fans out there. But it's a Nissan Ray. Uh, I think it's Iridium Blue Pearl. So I saw the colour as a car. It's kind of the car I want to replicate as well, to a degree. Um, especially on the colour. I think the wheels are the same as one I've got as well. I can't remember now. Um, so this is a touch-up paint from uh, paint nuts i've used it before I've used it on the sierra the escort um and a few other cars are built it's beautiful you get 50 mil for about 18 pounds delivered and you can thin this down to about 120 milliliters of paint so you get a lot out of it i know it seems a lot of money but you get a lot of paint for that they do do smaller uh 20 mils for about 14 pounds delivered um uh, but i thought for the extra money for the size of this car we'll go for the 50 mil so you can get these online for paint nuts. They even do bigger quantities, litres, etc. And the paint is beautiful because we've already test sprayed them. And there's the colour. Now the colour doesn't show that well under these really bright lights. But basically a really nice dark pearlescent blue. So we've got one over white UMP, one over grey. Just see if there's any tonal difference. And to my eye, I don't think there actually is. So we're not sure on prime colour yet. But this is 100% the colour we're going to do the body in. And I will pop up the picture of that car. I want to try and replicate near the end. There we go. So that's the kit. That's all the aftermarket. That's all the bits I've got for it. This is going to be a video build. I'm contemplating it starting it next. It's either that or the F1 car. I kind of want to build this. I kind of don't because of the size of it. But I really, really do want to build it. So... We're going to have to see what happens there. But let's go back to me. Let's have a bit of a chat. Right then, as you can see, a lot there. Um, I'm not sure the length of this review. It's probably going to be nearly an hour, if not. Yeah. So there's a lot to get through. The, the standard kit alone looks amazing. For a Fujimi kit, which can be hit and miss, it swings around about. It's great in some places. It's a bit, lax in, um, it's a bit lacking in detail in others. But... I can take that. Overall, though, it looks a great kit. For £150, if you can find it, because it seems to come in and go out of stock quite often, it looks like a good kit, especially if you're a fan of the JDM market or the Skylines and what have you. And the R32 is an iconic car. It wasn't one of my favourites till about the Tamiya one, and it's grown on me a lot. I've always preferred the R34 and R35, personally, but it's a great-looking car. And then the colour I chose, that Insignia, Iridium Blue, not Insignia, um, I think it's going to really pop and look pretty cool. So this is the picture we found originally of the colour on this car. The car's been hit and miss. It's been mod highly modified. It's a little bit rough in places. And it's got an absolutely horrendous interior. 
um, but the colour, it gives you a real indication of what the colour should look like. So that's the colour we're going to try and replicate. We've got all that beautiful Studio Rosso aftermarket, which you know, the standard kit's good. Adding that stunning resin is going to take it to the next level. I think it's going to look um, hopefully really good. And it should be a nice, interesting build as well along the way. So let me know your thoughts in the chat. Should I build this straight after this Porsche I'm doing? Should I do the F1 car first and then come back to this? We've got, there's a big 12 scale, well, big car, big scale car group build going on right now. It starts at the beginning of the month. Runs for another five months, but I'm eager to build this. And this is going to take me a while to build, but not a ridiculous amount of time, I don't think. I plan on video building it. So should I build that now after the Porsche is done? Or on the 1st of March, should I start the F1? GB with the Martini Lotus, which is this, which is another iconic car. Or should we do the Skyline first, then that? Or should we do that first and then the Skyline? Don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the chat and I'll have a little think about it. But I'm on the fence. I'm coming to the end of the Porsche build now. I've probably got another week's worth of work on that and we're ready to rock and roll on a new project. I've been eager to build this Skyline since the day I got it. Um, so yeah, need to have a good think about that. But it looks a great kit, and like I say, very very lucky. Thank you, Lee, uh, who contacted me about those after market parts because that was just fantastic to find those because it's going to add a whole new level of detail to the kit. And hopefully, really make it pop and stand out from the crowd. So uh, there we are. <laughs> Not there we go. There we are. So there we are. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the chat. Make sure you sub to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I read all the comments and appreciate them all. I don't do box reviews very often because I always feel I'm boring people because it's just me waffling on for God knows how long about a box of plastic. Um, so let me know your thoughts on that as well because I've got loads of kits to review. I just find there are bore people at the best of times. Never mind waffling about plastic on sprues. As always, check out Intensive Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, where you can get a lot of the products I show in my videos. My Paul ISM Facebook page and Instagram page, the Live of the Bench page for the live show news, the Off Air Hangout group for the Off Air Hangout links, and the Intensive Scale Model group build page where all the information for the group builds is shared. There's a big long description uh, attached to this video with all those links in including a big list of all the products I use in my videos. Uh, if you've watched this far, let me know your favourite... Hmm, let me know what your favourite car is. Uh, just just general favourite car is. Uh, for me, I've probably got two. Mine is the Sierra three-door Cosworth, either the RS500 or the standard car, and the Escort uh, RS Cosworth. Two of my favourite cars I would absolutely love to own. Um, but probably never will because they're crazy, crazy money. So let me know yours. I will see you all next in a bench update in a few days where we probably will have decided what we're going to build. But let me know your thoughts in the chat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review and it didn't waffle on too long. If you made it this far, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve a, an achievement of all for getting this far. Thanks, everyone. Catch you all later. Bye-bye.